Okay, so I put this presentation slash materials together and I'm kind of in a bunch of different areas that I think will kind of um, capture interest as far as how to engage students. Doesn't mean that I'm the master of it, but I've got some master ideas on it. And some, some of them will be really quick tools that you can take away and use tomorrow. And some of them will be, you know, long term, what can I do to change the way I do the class? Okay. So the idea of keeping them awake, obviously it's not just keeping them awake, but keeping them involved um, and an integral part of that. So if you join um, <clears throat> Google Classroom, if you didn't already, go to classroom.google.com. Make sure you enroll as a teacher first. You can always go in as a student later. So I'll give you a second to go on that. So go to classroom.google.com, go to www, anything like that. Choose teacher. And then once you've done that, you can go back and join a class and enter this whole RxD PPQV. And then I'll just make sure that you're able to do that. You'll be able to access the presentation. You'll be able to edit the presentation, even live, so you can write nasty stuff up on me and let you up right away. So yeah, that's just going to be a little tutorial. What do you want to go with another uh, student? You want to join as a teacher first. Oh, yeah. Okay, so start using I am. Uh, let's start your A shirt. Um, let's do this first though. Because I want to make sure it doesn't default to as a student. Okay. Now we are good. Now you can join. And then you put in the code. Okay? Okay. Yeah, we're glad you did it that way. Am I in the correct one? You are in the correct one. So you should be able to go to instructions and then open that up. And you'll be on the same one. It has editing rights, and I need that too because may I trust you 100%. And B, if you want to add in your ideas, then you don't have to wait for me to write it or anything like that. You can just add them in as you want. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, just open. So the, the your work is if we gave you an individual assignment, we can turn it in later. Under instructions, you'll be able to access that same. Let's get just give me a tutorial. Let's go to instructions and then just click on it. All right, I should have put on my, uh, stuff too. So, uh, with today, it's not just me talking to you, even though I did most of the talking, but you need to train your own adventure. So if there's something that you want me to go into more details, if you are know, spending a half an hour on one app or program or idea, let's do that, it's up to you. Um, and we, if you don't get to all the materials, that's really fine. Um, I just have enough, and then I want to capture interest and kind of get you thinking about something. All right, so stop or you don't have to feel like this is time. So these are some ideas, some things that might stick out to you when we talk about engagement, some things that stick out to me when I first Google was game, questions, strategies, Olympics, learning, procedures, obviously students. This one I like a little bit more. <clears throat> kind of challenging, get them thinking. It's driven, participate, collaborate, meaningful, exciting, critical, academic, student responsibility. There's tons of words, real world, transformative, um, project based. These are all words that will come up when we search for engaged students. Okay? So these are some of my ideas and some of the research. So <clears throat> how do we engage students? I try to think of what they like to do. If it's something they like to do then they're going to be engaged. That's my logic. So how can we recreate what they do for fun at school? So if you guys want to add any other things to this list, and I'm actually sending out a student survey to gather their interests and see how many of them really do go hunting? How many of them really do use social media? How many of them really do watch YouTube videos? And based on that response, I'm going to change the kinds of activities I do in my classroom. So that's one good really practice. Make a survey and then change your activities according to the kinds of things that they do. do they enjoy it. Yep. So, do you think it matters that you restart? I think it's such that. Are you yeah. going to do it at the beginning of next year and then plan from there, or are you doing it at the end of this year? Well, this year I'm doing it at the end yeah. because I'm changing my thinking. Yeah. You know, to gather interest, but I'm going to do it at the beginning for sure next yeah. year. You could have yeah. like initial stuff kind of yeah. set up. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, 
um, and then gauge from there. So, you know, they like to call their friends. They may listen. If you want to add anything to again, this is live. And you can add things right in there. Um, they like to chat, uh, call their friends. If they like to make videos. I have tons of students that just like to make videos of them playing video games or being goofy or whatever it is. Um, listen to music. Maybe you have a couple of them that reads, right? <laughs> uh, they do this. A lot of them go hunting, they go on trips, they play sports. Some of these are easier to recreate in your classroom, others are not, but I'm trying to get there. So, you guys think of any other thing that they might do? Play you do? music. Like play music, yeah, sure. You, if you had to just put in a slash for that, go ahead. So if they're in this, yeah, if they play an instrument or like make music, right? Social media is going to be on like, yeah, Twitter and like, Yeah, area. that, yeah, Instagram, um, Twitter, Facebook. They say that Facebook is for old people, you know, Instagram, and there's a couple others out there that they say they use. Um, and I think some students do use Twitter, but um, I feel like a lot of high schoolers use Twitter, but maybe not middle schoolers. Um, some of the students have tried to add me on Google Plus, which they can follow you, and you can't do anything about it. Same Twitter, they can follow you, you can't do anything about it, which I'm fine with, but um, I mean, I guess you can block them if you don't want to. Wait a minute, on Google Plus, like, is it saving? They can add you to their circles. So on my phone, you take photos, No, like you would have to give them automatic sharing rights. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, they won't be able to see that, but they can see your profile. And, you know, so it's, it depends on if you make it public or if you add it to that. So, yeah. No, it's pretty safe that way. Well, if there's other things in there that you think um, that they do, you know, you can add that in at any time. Okay. So, these are some tips from another fellow teacher. Um, and I think it gives us, you know, some really good tips. Um, number one, engage your kids with a smile at the door. Arrange classroom seats using a semicircle or a U shaped setup. So I have it this way because I can have discussions with my small group and it's U-shaped because then we're not just, it's not every single kid is watching me. How can we collaborate? And so we do quite a bit of that. He's in with my desk around. Um, but it also, I have to do some bars with instruction as well. Right. Um, I start at the beginning of the class period, gaining rapport with students, ask questions, share stories about things that relate to the topic of the day, deliver all lessons with enthusiasm. Voice just pauses by language use supporting technology 55% of the time. So that one is pretty huge to me, especially when we talk about personalized learning or saying this is shoved in there. And it, if that's a statistic that he's pulling from, if we should be on our Chromebook or wherever it is, 55% of the time, I think that's not unreasonable, right? Um, that, that's a good number to shoot for. Um, facilitated learning students should be talking 80% of the time. I like that too. Deliver information and instruction using um, NL, so audio, visual, kinesthetics, so getting them around, not just um, listening all the time. Help students using their specific brain function, like plasticity, send a table goal for the period. Remember, chain is good to keep the students wondering what's happening next. So, even as I have introduced tools like Kahoot in the past, and already I've used it like three or four times this year, and already I'm like, oh, I'm getting a little bored with it, and they might already be getting or a game type application. So I now have to find new things. Okay. <clears throat> so the next idea is gamification. You may have heard that before, but this is a big limit and my big goal for next year. And gamification is basically setting parameters, um, setting goals for them to make it interesting, getting their interest by you know setting levels and not just being about a grade, but especially like our GT kids that can go beyond. You know, they all like to play Minecraft. They all like to play this game and that game. And those games give them rewards, they give them badges, they give them medals according to how much they play and how well they play, right? So you think of a game like Call of Duty where they're shooting guys in the head all the time. Well, if they do enough shooting at guys in the head all the time, they're really good at that skill and they're going to get badges for it. So how can we do that in the classroom? <clears throat> so make students co-designers. So making them a part of the collaborative process. And that's... That's kind of hard to do because we want all that control, right? But how can they design your game of the classroom? Allow second chances and third, so whether it's formative assessments. Not necessarily arguing that for some of the flipped you, the formal assessment should be a regular part of the classroom. Um, so they have to be a safe environment for them to fail, right? When you play Mario, you fall into the pit all the time. 
So, and that's okay. You can continue, you can get more lives, you can get more lives, etc. <clears throat> Provide instant feedback. You jumped wrong, that's why you fell into the pit. So if we wait a week for them to give them feedback, it's not like not very interesting. So we use apps like Fuguru or Socratic where it tells them right away they got it wrong. Not wait until a week later we correct the paper and say, oh, you got that right or wrong, and then they don't care about it. <clears throat> Make crop progress visible. So they suggest making a leaderboard. And you actually show you know, your top 10 for all your classes all the time. And most kids, they want to have that high score. When you're playing Pac-Man, you want to have that high score, right? And so that's huge incentive. Um, is having a leaderboard in your classroom. Create challenges or quests, especially it doesn't matter if it's low level or high level, but it's not just do this worksheet, it's figure this problem out. <clears throat> Six, give students voice and choice. So student autonomy, we talk about that all the time. They have to have not just one assignment, but maybe an option of 10 assignments that they could do to meet that goal. And it's a lot of work. I've been doing this for about three weeks now, and I'm not quite the gamification of personalized learning. It's a lot of work, but kids are more engaged and tolerant. Offer individual badges and rewards. I've kind of talked about that already. Have students design an achievement system, so maybe they get a better sword. Maybe they get better armor. Maybe they get to the next level. Maybe they get coins, okay? And you can give them some options. Implement educational technology, so when you guys get that device, or if you have it already, use it. One of the worst things I heard from students was, you're the only class where we get to use our Chromebooks. And they said the word get to use our Chromebooks. And then that was to me was like, well, why do we have it? And that was why the iPads failed, because we weren't using them well enough. <clears throat> Embrace failure, emphasize practice. I've had plenty of things, um, whether it's Erasma, that took way more time than I wanted to. Didn't go that well, but you know what? The kids still liked. <laughs> Honestly, they did. They knew that I was trying. They were trying different things. and. They would figure stuff out, and so we were collaborating on this learning process. So this idea of cool designers is kind of um, embracing failures. So that's gamification. So there's some articles. I'm not going to go to them all, but this one, if you want to just, if you ever have time, we're obviously not going to watch it. But you have to just create an account, and it's free. You just put in your email address, and it's very legit. And she gives a one-hour seminar in gamifying the classroom. What I wanted to show you is there's a presentation, and this is her gamified classroom page, which I think is pretty good. So here she's got a touch of class with me, Thomas. It's her profile, and then she's got her leaderboard, okay? And so she's always posting a live system where it shows who is in the top tier. She gives them experience points, AP points, which they can use to buy stuff. So you think of things like World of Warcraft where you get gold and you can buy items. They get to buy items in her class. They join a guild and there's a team that can get different points. Um, they're in a period and there's a certain level that's by the, you know, how much they have achieved. <clears throat> she uses things like Class Dojo for behavior and that can uh, affect their AP points. So if they're a knucklehead, they're going to lose some of the AP points because of behavior. Um, <clears throat> She has her own YouTube channel, so she does a really good job. So she has under here is the class structure. And here she talks about her experience points. So to be at stage one, and they have to go through a certain amount of things and have to achieve a certain amount of experience points before they can go on to the next stage. She's got rules for a classroom. You can only do missions based on your current stage. All missions that the tutorial must be successfully completed before moving on. So anyway, um, there's a lot of really good resources, and it kind of gives you an idea of, even if we just start with something really small, like start with making levels and using experience points and say, if you complete this assignment, you get 500 experience points. And how does that translate to a grade? If it was 100 experience points, that's easy to do the math on the percentage, right? Or if we want to make it 700 or something that's worth more, um, you can kind of you know, break down the math and translate it into a grade. So this is easily transferable to a grade, but when it's experience points, you know, they're getting a level that's more interesting for them. Okay? So that's kind of some basics on gamification. That's one way, I believe, to engage your students. And there's a couple of articles. for six easy steps. Um, and some really quick tips, even if we're just right here and now, what we can do. <clears throat> Let's 
Okay, the next one I want to show you is just some really practical tools. Those are kind of my big ideas, and I apologize if I talk too much. But quizzes, have you guys used this one before? No, nope? that's okay. I'll just have you guys play the one that we did in my class today for anthropology. That was my first time using it, um, but I liked it. And we've done Kahoot, and so it won't be all that different. Um, but I think you'll like this one. So, what you're going to do is go to this. You just get no www. Join.quizizz.com. <coughs> Sometimes it came up as quiz easy -Z, and that's not right. Q-U-I-Z-I-Z-Z.com. And I should have three that allow you to go in. And then what I always tell the kids is you can have a nickname, but it has to have your first name as a part of it. So, I should have to be able to tell the team. Like Emily named herself MOB, you know. And they can be a little bit funny, but it had to be school appropriate and it had to have their first name in it. So it could have been like St. Patrick or whatever. Patrick the Great. Yeah. And then you put in that code, it's 19012. It should be 902 and help. Uh, who else? Terry? Can you help? <laughs> this is already what happens. You know, you start blabbing and kids are probably, maybe like you are, sidetracked doing something else. And that's, that's what that means. Okay, so I'm going to start it. And I realize that you may not know the answer to this, but you probably figured it out. So I'll just explain how it works while you're playing it, because it's okay. Essentially, um, it's time-based, so the faster you get it done, the more points you get, and, um, well, obviously, if you get it correct, you're going to get more points. But on the board, if I was using this in class, I can already start to see, A, their progress. So green means you got it right. Uh, red means you got it wrong. It tells how many times they answered each question and they go at their own pace. So in using Kahoot, it's at the teacher pace versus this is at the student's pace. There are a lot of questions, so we're not gonna, I'm not gonna make it, I'm not finish it out. I just wanted to give you, give you a little taste of the competition, so it's like, you guys are doing really well, I should have you in the social science class. <laughs> they think I do the teacher yet. <laughs> 20 minutes, they're easy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could do this at, yeah, I'm sure it's, yeah, we're going to put different trivia. Um, the difference of Buffalo Wild is why everybody's on the same question at the same time. This one is self paced, so you guys are all on different rate, and you can see that, like Patty Owen wrong. Um, but you can see how far you are up on that graph in the screen. You know, you can see your head of um, Terry Moore. And the one thing I really like this is that it says totally correct, totally wrong. So I'll tell you, man, you're at a 60%, you know, correct rate. And, you know, and so I started going over the questions, even while they're still taking the quiz. And then, you know, you guys are all getting this one wrong, and I'll just write it live. So it's like, it's like a video game, it's live, it's um, interactive, it's competitive. So up here, if you're leading it, um, this says how many people got it right, this how many people got it wrong. You know, so if I break down, let's see, which was the one that I got wrong. Okay. That's okay, I'm glad you did get it, because then I would explain, the anthropologists like the relationship of language and culture are all and then links, right? And then, if, especially if a lot of them got along, I would want to flag that one right away and could track down. So even though it's self-paced, I still interact with them as they're taking this quiz. Or everybody got that one wrong. Now, the tricky one because it says some Americans like pizza, bad and not a stereotype, and that a lot of people didn't know what a stereotype is, so I have to explain that. Okay? 
I'm going to end it, and I'll just kind of go on from there. Nice job. I'm not going to go all the way to Sure, it's very, did you do the cahoots with me? Yeah. It's just as easy. In fact, actually, I think it's, I don't know why this is not responding to me. Why <laughs> sure, well, I, I don't choose one or the, over the other at all, apart from this one is student-based, and cahoot is my way together. Um, I, I do chose, I choose all of them, and the reason why is one game can get one. You're doing that every couple of weeks. Like, oh, it's yeah. Or it's quizzes again. So I think you want a kind of variety, the kind of activities you have. So they can all their own Yeah, and I can still differentiate my instruction, or as kids, even today, some of them pay earlier than others. So we just like a moment into the class and we lost some different things. It's really fine. It's just, you know, it's a game and they can see the leaders and that kind of stuff. So I had 39, which is a lot. And I'm sorry, this is, I wanted to show you the... You can only do multiple choice. Uh, it gives, yeah, you can do between two and four answers. And it can't be more than four answers. Same with the um, And you do the The big disadvantage of the is you can't see the questions and the answers on your screen. You can just use the color and the shape. It has to be all of them. So this is, they can see everything there. Yeah, that's, that's reason, one reason why it's better. Um, okay, I don't know what's happening here. Let me go to... Not yet. And that's, and that's why what I do is, as they're working on it, I let them finish, right? Um, and then I'll just start reteaching right away. So I'll go start going over these questions, especially the ones they got wrong. You know, and kids are not quite done, so I try to keep everybody involved. Those are done are listening to me. Those are not done are kind of listening, kind of finishing up. But yeah, I'll let you might have a kid that takes 10 minutes longer than the first kid, right? Um, but for, so far, it's gone really well um, using this one. They got it right. Yeah, how many got it right? Yeah. Uh, the green, or this one right here. That's how many people did not, I guess I could just hover, just not attempted. So how many kids have left to take this one? You guys, nobody got to this question. Okay, so maybe the bell rang and you didn't get to go over that one, that kind of thing. Um, there's one thing I was going to show you really quick. You can download all of their responses really nicely. And it's really nicely color-coded, much like you might see in Kuguru or something. And you can see which ones they got wrong. And this one's my actual class results, you know. So I might flag those questions or everybody got that China right. So I apparently talked about China a lot, right. Everybody, almost everybody got a lot of some of these wrong. But some of them they really didn't. So I want to target those either immediately or the next day. Or you can use the study test if you want, right. You don't have to make it on a Google form or a picture and grade it. You could. There it is. And it's still a little bit more fun. Um, sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's let's do that. Thank you for asking this question. Otherwise, I get going and going too fast on stuff. So to set up an account, it's quizzes.com. You're good. You're set up now. So to make an account. You get to it from your email, or you have to just go to. You do have to go to a class. I just have it bookmarked. So once I did that, I just hit the star. So if you go to classroom, that Google. No, it's not a option. Right? Oh, is it really? I never. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, never mind then. I never noticed that. So yeah, you can. So yeah, I click there and it's going to take me to my, my course load. Okay. All right, yeah, please stop me if I am not making sense. So if you guys want to create an account real quick, you can. 
and then I can show you how to make a quiz. If you're not interested in that, I'll just go on to the next piece. Okay, you guys like to create an account, and then I'll show you how to make a make a quiz. Yep. So go to quiz is. You just put in quiz is dot com, like that. You kids misspell it all the time. So I do. I have to get in my head. Quiz I Z Z. Once you go there, it'll say get started. So you click on get started. And then it'll ask you to create an account. There's an option to choose Google. If you go down a little bit, there's a little G. And then it just you can just uh, choose your Boston House Schools login and you're done for creating an account. It's really nice. Yep. As you're starting to log in or create an account, just go down a little bit and it's a little icon with a lowercase g in blue. So there's tons of public quizzes. So like if you know you're doing something, whether it's on India or whatever, you can look at it and then hover over it and see what those questions are. And maybe you don't have to ever create a quiz ever. But when I search for anthropology, I don't think there was any hits. Except for mine. Okay. It says 1 to 15, but... Um, Oh, it's just results one to fifty. This is only one. Okay, so you create your own quiz. You name it. <clears throat> let's do U.S. Let's do Civil War. Okay, and then you have to add a tag. So U.S. history. And you hit a comma to make a tag. We have to put one tag in there. Civil War. Comma. And then you just hit add questions. And this is where it's really nice, which I like more than a lot of the other programs. It's really quick and it's live. So uh, who was president during the Civil War? Notice it shows up live. It shows you what it's going to look like. Let's go to option. Kennedy or JFK. FDR. <clears throat> Washington. Lincoln, you want to hit tab, hit enter, and it changes to correct. And now is this how much time it took me to create a question. And I just hit add question. You can upload an image. I didn't use a lot of images in mine because we put it behind the text. So, and the text is white, so sometimes the text would be hard to read. So for me, I didn't choose a lot of images. You can change the time. <clears throat> I usually leave it at 30 seconds just in case the kids are a little bit, well, slower. That's fine. But maybe for true false, you want to give them 20 seconds or something. I don't know. Okay. So that's quiz is. That kind of gets you set up. You can always mess around with it later, right? So that one is a lot of fun. Um, and I'm, as I'm introducing a few of them to you, uh, I'm going to survey my students and see which one they like the most. I've already had mixed feelings. And if I have mixed feelings, it means I'm going to use them all because I like variety. All right, here's the next one, which I use today. It's called Clip Quiz. And this is kind of more your traditional Jeopardy, but it's a really quick way of making a Jeopardy game. The disadvantage to it that I see is you only have pretty much your brightest hits, or you can find your own system of saying, OK, each team member can only answer once, or somebody else has to answer. You, know, you figure that out. But it's kind of like making a Jeopardy game in your class. Um, and there are a bunch of made. You put students in team, and only one person, of course, can answer at a time. So that's a disadvantage to this one. But I did do it today, and it did. I was able to keep it going pretty well, and it was pretty fun. So you set up a quiz, and you. Um, I'll just kind of show you how it is. You divide them into teams, and you say you pick a category and a point. And then what I do is I took put this timer on. And I put on auto. As soon as I click on a timer, I usually 
Now I'm going to go 15 seconds because 30 seconds to wait for them to answer is a little bit long to me. Um, there's a little side thing. You can do double points. So the kids are starting to get uninterested and they're like, we're way behind. I put on the double points. And then all of a sudden, it's worth 1,000 points. And they can get back in the game really quickly, right? Uh, dark mode, that just changes your coloration. Height title, if you want to save some space. Smaller questions. Okay. So I'll show you the game. Typical Jeopardy game, they choose the category. As soon as I click this, this timer starts. I read it to them. I usually have a scorekeeper like I did today. And they watch as I read the question for the person that raises their hand first. That's how I did it. It worked pretty well. They answer, and then I'll reveal the answer so that anybody that's more visual, they didn't quite hear me well. Time is up. That's okay. I don't have to wait for the timer. The answer is technology. Okay, I hit exit that out. The nice thing is that one's automatically blurred out. Language, four. People living in a tundra would have many words for. Call on somebody, ton, uh, snow, and they get it right. I give them 400 points, right? So it's a really easy way of doing a, a classic Jeopardy. So between those three, if you like, you know, everybody participating and you want the more live traditional, I would go with flip quiz, it's called. If you want everybody to participate, which I think is better, then there's two options, one of which is the first one I just showed you, which is quiz is, and the other one is Kahoot. All right, so um, flip quiz, what all I'm gonna say is, if you want me to work with you on creating a comp for flip quiz, Again, what do I, why? I think all of these are valuable and using them all in a variety of ways is what you want to do. So if you just type in flip quiz, that will take you to that website. Okay. You want me to spend more time helping you create an account or move on? No? Okay. <clears throat> all right, the last one as far as kind of game-based review game slash you can use as a formative, as an exit ticket, whatever is Kahoot. And I think everybody, at least you two, have done the Kahoot. Pat, have you done Kahoot? I've seen it. Yeah. Okay. I'm not using it myself. Okay. All right. Well, let's just, just for your, for your sake, let's just demo it really quick. So that's the main Kahoot.it. So Make your own at Kahoot, get Kahoot. My free account, oops, just gotta hit sign in. This one does not give me the Google option. All right, so this one has almost, it's two and a half million public quizzes up there. So this one's extremely popular, much more popular than the, the, either of the others. So these are some ones I've created. We'll do one that maybe it's a, somewhat challenging for you guys. Let's do U.S. Supreme Court cases. All right, so there's a couple of options here as I'm starting it, just to play a game pin throughout. I like to do that. And then now that's loaded, it'll show me the advanced options. I like to have an automatic and move through questions that I don't have to be in the front of the classroom. I can monitor what they're doing throughout the class. And this one has music. You can put videos in. You can have pictures in. It does a really good job. And this is, I have a video playing before they start. I think you'll really like it for your high schoolers. Okay, so what they do is that you guys have to go to kahoot.it. Like you did before, quizzes.com, and you have to put in this pin, 596126. And what I did is, this is not a video, I didn't have to make that, it just allowed you to put in a, a video for your intro. So it kind of keeps them going as so it's not just dead air. Or you can put a picture or a song on whatever you want. So has the the question at the top and what I, you may I took if you don't get these right, but I'll read the question to them and on your screen the screen that said quizzes you don't see the answers on your screen you can see the colors right or the shapes, which is good for colorblind kids. And for this one I gave them a lot more time that way they could look it up if they wanted to because it's a really good game. It's not to say if they can get it wrong, I want them to get it right. So I'll say hey you've got a lot of time. 
as soon as all everybody um, answers, it will auto progress. So if I'm in on my account, yep. where do I type in? Oh, sure. Did I not have you join? Sure. So you need to go to. Uh, no, you still can. Kahoot's dot. You can still join. Yep. But if you're in your account, can you get the? Uh, no, you have to go to Kahoot's dot. So you're on there as if you were going to host right. a game. You're joining it. That's all right. It's good for you to experience it too. So and then it's five nine six one two six. Are you in that? So again, I get the permission to look it up. No. It does always use the same music, and they do have to look at the screen for the answers to the questions. So, apart from that, quizzes, or computer's better, I think. Quizzes and some things, this is my case. You know, I can change that tab in 20 seconds. Yeah, it's going to be more challenging, so I mean, are you able to get in there? Yeah, it's just going to answer the question. Oh, okay. So it's going to be like, wait. Oh, I can get the answer. That's okay. That's okay, yeah. Yeah. So the nice thing is you see they get a lot. I have an auto progress that doesn't give me much time to reteach it, but it gives the scoreboard only gives the top five people. So it's not embarrassing to anybody that's in the top. Yes. You know? Um, but just gonna show you your top five, which is really great. Because so, you want to at the high score, you want to, you know, let them up. They'll get more points based on how fast they answer and if they're correct. So it's just based on time. And these are all about court cases. And you can change, see how this auto progresses. If I change auto progress off, it'll give me a button, and I say go next. And you can stop and reteach and be like, well, actually, I'm loving Virginia. I remember this, 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 and this. So it's a really good way of you know, doing a check on their learning. Or you can make this your entire lesson. <laughs> I mean, you could just have this as your lesson, and they have to find those answers, and you give them two minutes, and then you can teach it, and then you go to that court case, et cetera. So, there's a lot of ways that you can ask this. What's that? There are tons of math, math, I know, I know. I don't have any math quizzes created. We could have done one though. So, okay, you get the idea, right? I know that um, just Pat hasn't done that, but I think it's really valuable. If I had to choose one thing this year, it'd probably be Google Classroom 2, would be Classroom and um, Code. All right. <laughs> All right, so. Everyone participates. You can also download the results just like you saw this, I think. The who and actually quizzes have kind of the same comfort the same format. <coughs> okay. Um, for a lot of my students that are pretty shy, this one has been really easy to use and also really engages them because I like to do a conversation and we're talking about critical thinking skills and answering difficult questions as well. Not everybody is willing to share out loud. And so, you know, this one's really simple. Today's meet, basically you can just create a quick chat room and then have to have an account created, just you. And um, this actually, like I said, works really well for kids that never participated. I think the kid was 20 miles and they were a teacher in all year. And he was the one that was just playing all kinds of great stuff on there, you know? So, and that's saying you should do it all the time because there is such thing as conversational oral skills that should be worked on. But for these kids that are shy, disadvantaged, or in ELL, I have a lot more participations. Again, they don't need to have an account set up. I'm not going to go through that. Just go to today, today's meet, though. And uh, you have this presentation. You can now just you know, revisit that and use it. Um, again, it's 100% free and really easy. Um, so this is another idea that I use definitely for an entire unit you know, for sociology. I create an entire presentation. So your typical PowerPoint lecture. I put them all together rather than having separate slides. They have one massive one, like 80 slides long. <clears throat> and in the mix of that, what every five slides, I'd have a little activity for the students. It would say something like, read page, blah, blah, blah. 
or insert uh, an immediate graphic organizer using Google Drawing in a very specific direction on what they had to do. Or they had to put in a picture of their nuclear family or a picture of their extended family. You know, so the idea here is with Google Slides and Google Classroom, you can make a copy for them, that was an option on Google Classroom. And then, since they have their own copy, they can edit it for themselves. And then, of course, like a worksheet. But they also have all the information on there as well. And I can circulate around the room, make sure they're all on the same slide with me. And then I'll say, okay, now you're working on this. And so it was a really good way, and then they can turn that in. And then I just check that entire presentation with all the information on there. And there really was no excuses for um, really anything. Okay, so I gave an editable presentation with the slides, and students followed along when I was talking. And then when I gave them a task, they make various slides, like interesting activities. So integrate Google Drawing for graphic organizer again as they had to speak to her roles in their life, whether it's a student, athlete, little brother. They took pictures using their Chromebook. So you can go to insert picture and they can use their Chromebook to take a picture and can do anything, whether it's their homework, themselves, you know, or a project they're doing. And that was great evidence. Um, if you need to do some work in here, sir. Well, you know, grab some. I'll, I'll so have this one, and then I'll come back and okay. get it when I see the lights are out. You won't offend me if you need to do your work, okay? Or you won't offend me if you need to come here and do something, okay? okay. All right. I'll wait for you all. All right. Uh, scavenger hunt to find information. Um, you could document their opinions um, in a safe way. And again, it kind of works like a traditional worksheet, but it's for an entire unit. So I suggest using Google Slides and Google Classroom in conjunction, and they make their own copy of it. And then, you know, they use that as like a, uh, a unit long um, document. All right, this one is really great. What I had been doing Padlet is at the beginning of every single unit for you guys. Uh, for Padlet, you're talking about Civil War or whatever it is. I actually remember all the classes that you teach. But so as you're starting with maybe a new topic, um, whether it's an English language arts, whatever it is, I have, it's like our next unit is on economics. We're starting that tomorrow after the test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a Padlet, and I'm going to put that question on the board. And then the students post a quote, a picture, a video, or example, and response. And all they do is they just do a quick search and try to answer that one question. So they, and then I use their posts to discuss um, the question. And I really don't have to lesson plan all for that entire day. It works really well the entire year. I'll show you how that works. So my lesson is done without any prep. It's not because I'm lazy, but I'm using what they found to teach the class. And we have a, such a vari variety of levels of stuff that they'll find that that's why I've been really enjoying it. So Padlet, <clears throat> I'll just kind of pull this up. <clears throat> These are ones I've, we've done with my class in the past. So these are things that they found. So I just put on, the question was, what is sociology? Right up on top, right? And so they just had to answer that question in any way that they wanted to. They had to find some kind of media or a quote. And you can click on any of these. And then I might say, well, that one maybe is appropriate or not. Or, and then I'll use that to teach. And I can just hit the next and go through the line. You know, I talk about that quote. And I, they might find a picture, and I'll explain how that relates to sociology. Um, they might find, uh, these are quotes, they might find videos. You know, I just use this basically to teach for that day. Or they find an article, okay? And like I said, it, it does the prep for me. Because what is Padlet is, it's just like a bulletin board where they, all they do is they, let's exit out. They just double click on a spot. They can write something. <clears throat> they can do a link. They can upload something or they can um, take a photo from the webcam. So they can allow. And they can even put a picture of themselves on there. They can do a link to a, um, an image. They would just copy and paste the image URL, the video URL. Um, and then this is to, from their computer, something that they have. Okay, And that may seem very fairly rudimentary, but it's a way of making a collage. And it gets the students involved immediately. And then when you start teaching using what they put on there, they really like that. They felt like, oh, Mr. Pondetti used my stuff today. And they felt really great about it. So that's Padlet. Can you save the yes. Yes. Yep. 
So what I do is I just create like five of them in the beginning of the day, one for each of my periods, right? They don't need an account to contribute. That's a great thing. You just need an account to create it. So um, here's. What's that? Would you sign up for the Yeah. Would you do the backpack option? No. The jetpack thing? No, that's a, yeah. Right See it? Sure. Oh, hey, um, Mark, if you get a chance, just on the end, it doesn't matter. There's just an attendance and feedback. It just documents that I wasn't talking to myself today. You don't have to do it right now, but maybe when you get a chance, just follow that link. Okay. All right, thanks. Okay. Um, so, yeah, no, I wouldn't do the jetpack. I would just do the free account 100%, and that's definitely all you need for that. So I throw something up there, and you can do whatever you want with it, but that's how I use it, and then they contribute. And that really worked well. Um, Erasma. Uh, well, I'll explain without you, it's not going to be nearly as cool without me demonstrating. But you may not realize that all the posters in my room are interactive. And they're what's, what's, what's called augmented reality. So you take something in, the, in real life, and there's something in addition to it when it's augmented with the doing it. So that picture of Yoda up there, when I point the Aras on my app on it, all of a sudden he starts to talk. And what I have is it's a layered video on top of it. So I took that, that scene from Dagobah and had it where he's saying, you know, do or do not, there is no try, right? Um, right here, it's a, it's a silly song, we taking it outside, so we or here I have the B.E.D. Bruce Lee, you know, and I get goofy stuff. But then um, I have really important steps with student projects. So on this little picture of Abraham Lincoln, when I pointed at that, it's one of my students pretending to be Abraham Lincoln explaining who it is again, who is about who he is. These are what I call identity, well, they're identity projects. And they had to go around and try to figure out who it was. Doesn't have their name on it, doesn't have their image on it. By using Erasma, it did explain who it was. So first they went around and did a scavenger hunt. They tried to guess who it was. Then they used their Erasma app, they pointed at it, and then all of a sudden the person came over on top of the poster and took explained their poster. So you can do it for explaining a paper, or it's by a project or any kind of display or presentation. Um, it kind of takes the edge off that way. So that's how I use Erasm. I do project uh, explanations, scavenger hunts, all about me, role plays, book reviews. So you could have it, let's say you had every single book in your classroom as an Erasm. Anybody that's read it, you'd say you have to create a book review. And then after you read this boring book, Social Sciences, what did you think of it? And then they make a quick video, and using that app, it's pretty self-explanatory um, how to use it, but all of a sudden they could be explaining how they like the book or whatever they be. Okay. Um, so like a reading commentary or a book review, you know, Erasma is really good. And you'll see the little A um, throughout things, and that just means you have to follow a certain channel. And once you do that, you point it at it and it does something for it. I'm sorry that I, I forgot to I forgot that I was doing this a little bit today, but um, my phone is not being on the internet here anymore as of today. Um, you guys don't have an iPad, do you? Okay. So unfortunately, without me going to another to the library to get one, I can't demonstrate it right now or without some more phone. But there's an app called Erasma. Basically, you just have to create a channel. It's really simple. It sounds more complicated than it is. And then you just choose a video. And then you take a picture or something. And then it overlays the video on top of that. So just tags a video to a picture. Um, the classic demonstrations for Erasma, I'm going to show you that really quick so at least you have an idea of what it might look like. So there's all kinds of tutorials, but I wanted to see the one um, with
I think that's one. Summer blink, some flowery breeze. So you can have them do like a role play. Now that's just a picture you'd have in your room. It could be like that Native American hat. It could be the proofreading march map. It doesn't matter what it was. It could be just a picture of your image of your notes on the board. Once they point that uh, their smart device at that picture, and if they have it tagged, point your channel, it's going to the channel. It'll just start playing that video on top of it. So to make this happen, you just had to make a video with this as the background or a green screen. Like I have stuff in the background. It's it's really not that hard. Or you just have a video of them, and it's still pretty good. You don't have to have the background perfect like they did on here. Okay, so that's kind of what Erasma can do. So you kind of open your brain up to scavenger hunts and you know getting kids moving around, especially for our middle schoolers. If I'm sitting down in front of the Chromebook all day. It's not going to work. Well, sometimes I don't mind it, but anyway. So it only works with smart devices? Um, yeah, so I do BYOD uh, days with my students. I say, hey, bring in your smartphone, and they love that. I'm telling you. If you give them a chance to use their phone, <laughs> they're going to be all about it. They might be a little distracted at times, but um, I either get the iPad card, and I have all the iPads loaded with that app for Horace Band, or I have to bring in their own phone. Um, the Chromebook, unfortunately, does not work for it. Okay, this is one of the few exceptions where I'm like, darn. But if that's all I'm losing because of using the Chromebook, I'm totally fine with it. Okay? But for something special, it would be a lot of fun. Especially, like, for your case, I would do, like, book reviews or things like that. It could be really neat. Um, for elementary, they do, you know, they do project explanations all the time. Or their writing piece. Okay. All right. So that was Erasma, <clears throat> or maybe it's Orisma, I don't know. It's the idea of an aura. Okay, the next one is Socrative. You guys used Socrative before? Yes? Terry, have you used Socrative? Okay, so Socrative um, and many, it's kind of like these other ones. It's another tool, and the one that I really like that they have is called a space race. So like what we did with um, the quiz is, it was how many questions they could get right. And they would go further along in the race, the faster they, you know, the more and the faster they got it right. So as far as creating really quick formative um, assessments, I use Socrative. Actually, the biggest feature I use for Socrative is the exit ticket. <clears throat> so I have this saved here too. And that requires me to do nothing, really. So it's just Socrative. I'm just going to hit start a quiz. And then I'm going to, oops, I'm going to do an exit ticket. So you might put your, you don't have to create this ahead of time. So you might say, um, there's three questions on the board, I'm sorry. So. How well did you understand today's material? That's one of them. So it might be a quick form. I totally got it pretty well, not very well, not at all. That's part of the exit ticket. What did you learn in today's class? And then they have to write down something they learned. This requires no prep on my part, except for this one. Please answer the teacher's question. So maybe I put define sociology in one word, right? Or define sociology in your own words. And they should put down study of people in groups. So then I've got three quick questions, and I can kind of see who got it, who did it without um, really doing much. So that's the exit ticket that I use. All they have to do to use this once you create an account is go to m.socratic.com, and this is the room number. And once they do that, um, those events, those um, results will start popping up. I'll show you the space race, and stop me if I'm going too fast, because I do it all the time. Yep. With Google, yep. 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 Don't be scared by that. It's a very trustworthy website. So just like give your soul away that one. 
people are always afraid by that. Um, if it's certain third party, I'd be worried about it, but Socrative is extremely trustworthy. Okay, I'll just show you the space race, which is the one that I was doing before. So you have to select a quiz. Um, I don't know, anthropology test, since we were doing that before. Number of teams, can only do two. Auto assign teams, rocket, height, student, right or wrong feedback. Um, no, I like them to see if they got it right or wrong. Okay? Yes. <clears throat> okay, so it'd be YouTube. So what the student would see is this, and I, I leave this on the board. And whether you have, even if you just do two teams and you have 20 kids in your room, it'll automatically assign so that you have 10 kids on each team. It just kind of goes back and forth. You might end up having you know, 9 and 10 if you have only 19. But, um, okay, so what the student would do is they would go to m.socrative.com. So I'll just do that for you. So m.socrative. Okay, if you're the teacher and you want to create an account, you can either see it there, otherwise it's just t.socratic.com to create an account. But the students go to m.socratic.com, okay? And a lot of them have the app um, on their iPads or on the Chromebook, that's also an app. So it just takes them right to it. So if I go to my Chromebook, I think it's still on here. Well, of course, I don't have the, the student view, but they should have that at the bottom. Otherwise, they just go here. And if you want to do this right now, just to see what it's like, it's 857711. So they just put in that number. And I always, I usually have it just posted on my wall, but they all like have it memorized or put it on my smart board lesson. Are you guys going to try it out or do you want me to go on? So go to M, just so you have an idea what it's like. Pat knows. He's a pro. But. Oh, okay. Have you done the space race? No, not, not with my class. Okay. So maybe this might be worthwhile to see. Again, I'm for a variety of activities versus just doing one all at the same time. You know, who wants to play Jeopardy every single time? I don't, you know, so. Yeah, if I seven seven one one. And you would want to write that real clearly with directions in fact. I should just have like a procedure closer for when I use this. I don't use it that often. Um, for Socratic, you can use it for formative, you can do it for summative. It'll <coughs> export it in a uh, Google Sheet all the results, so you can give you a score, are there how many points, etc. So I mean, it's a really good way of doing electronic quizzes, um, just like a lot of these other ones. Okay. okay, so where you, it should have you start, right? Should have you start right away. So I mean, you can just do a couple just to see what it's like, and you can see the progress. You get a team of five in the classroom. It's creating competition in a positive way. And it's a team effort, which is the other two ones I showed you, none of them were team efforts. So that's why I like this space race. They were all individual. But the so ones. for the picture one, I don't understand. Oh, I haven't done this in a while, so we ended up. Oh, OK, so you should have two. No way. Oh, so that could be an option. Okay, that's number one. So you have to put in your name, but I'm not sure. You must need to do that. They did say that I emailed them about some problems I was having. They said it's in their website was under website was under construction. So I wonder if yours wasn't working either. Too. I'm stuck on question number two about how you did not answer it. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, maybe I chose a, a bad quiz. 
try to start a different group. With this national word, space race, like this. All the sociology quiz too, that should be short. We are teams to start. Okay. So then you just say, okay, go back to m.secred.com, put that in, and then put it in the number. Sure, I'm not going to kick you out. Otherwise, you just rejoin. I don't know if that works. So. Try to let it go. Okay, so now it's working on. Okay. So yeah, you can see, like, if we had a bunch of people on Magenta, and they were getting more and more right, they'd be faster to the end. So it's kind of cool. So again, why would I use this one? First of all, you could do it for any quizzes, or you can do it an individual way. Like you can have 30 different teams if you want. Um, but I like this because it could be team-based, versus the other ones were not team-based. Except for maybe the Jeopardy one. I'll put them in groups for the Jeopardy. But then you just still one person answering, or you can say, uh, you can decide how you want to do that. <clears throat> okay, so that's the Socratic space race. And you're like, well, geez, I have to create all these different accounts, all these different quizzes. Well, yeah, let's create variety. Again, the idea is not to just play the same game all the time or the same activity all the time. And these, again, are mostly quiz-based, but... And then you can print feedback. Yes, I'll show you that. They'll actually send you an email. Yeah. Yep. Once you finish it, <clears throat> you can get the report, you can view the chart. Um, let's see, I usually do get, and I'll do whole class Excel. Yes. Individual student PDF, I don't do that. Question specific PDF, no. And I'll have it saved to my drive. And it automatically, a, a report has been added to your Google Drive. So this is the really, really nice thing about it. Go to my drive. And I have a quiz or a folder for Socratic reports that they created for me. The kids are randomly assigned to it? Yes. Um, I don't think there's any. There is a way for they can choose the team. There is. So if you want to say you guys are on the blue team, you are on the green, they can pick. Yeah, you can do that. I had it auto assigned randomly. And that partially takes kind of this thing off. Like, well, you know. Um, so the, the goofy thing about the way they date it on here is they do the day and the month. So this is October 7th. Don't ask me why. It's just how they do it. So that would be 2014. Here is today, okay? So it's 26th of May. For us history people, that makes sense because we like write our dates 26 May, right? 2015. <laughs> but yeah, that's it right there. So just those questions that you guys got through, it says your name because you put in your name and then, um, you know, number of correct answers and kind of gives me the diagnostics of that, okay? Shows you which ones you got wrong, et cetera. And again, people are like, well, this is multiple choice. Well, you can make it critical thinking skills. You can make it difficult questions. I used to do my worksheets on here. And I would say, you know, they have to read it. They have to find the answer. It beats you correcting worksheets or whatever you're trying to do. So even just starting small, um, any of these tools can, can work. Make it an individual sheet for if you have yes. longer answers than yes. you have yeah. yeah, if you're going to do like essays on there, yeah, then you probably want to do the PDF option. I usually don't for right. that, but right. if you're just doing that, yeah, yeah, if you're looking at the total numbers. Right. Yeah. Okay, so that's Socrative. Uh, let's see. Google Forms and Fluber. Again, I'm showing you a lot of these things are going to kind of accomplish the same thing. Google Forms and Fluber, have you guys gone through that? Yes, Pat? No, it's right. Terry? Okay. So um, this is the one I actually use probably the most often 
just because I have everything in Google and it's it's very easy to use. It sends them feedback. It's I would have to use any other program apart from Google Forms. All right, I'll show you real quick and I'll have you guys um, I can take have you guys take a quiz and I'll show you how it works too. So let me go to my I didn't get this set up. My drive, let's see. Starred anthropology. I got this one. Sure. Share. All right, form via email at P. Uh, I would you think it would it would start short, um, searching for it? But that's too bad. P G A L L I G A N. Is that right? No N. No N. <laughs> I'm gonna totally destroy yours. So what I usually do, actually you guys are on Classroom, let's do it this way, this will be way easier. Okay, I'm going to take this link, I'm going to put it in my Google Classroom, rather than trying to do it the goofy way, let's be smarter. You guys have already joined my Google Classroom, I'm going to make a quick assignment. I'm going to do a link, done, uh, forms, and Google. add, sign. All right, now, I, what, now everybody has access all the time. So now you can go to the Google Classroom, you go to the Google Classroom training, which you should be in. And just click on this link. And I'll take you to that form. Just throw in some random responses. There might be, there looks like you might want to do this gym. Six, seven questions. Now I'll show you how it works. <clears throat> sure, go to Google Classroom. I already joined, you've joined before, right? So if you're in your email, you can go to the apps and just learn that today. You go down, more, and then it's right there. And then go to the Google Classroom training and create an assignment. Now, I'm not trying to eat up all your time. I was originally just going to do an hour and then practice time, but I'm happy to go through this. I'm going to say it's a 515 no matter what. So if you're like, you know, <laughs> whatever, then I won't go through this in quite as much detail, but I think it can be really valuable. All right, so just putting quick responses for that. Um, with Google Forms, you can do uh, choose from a list, choose more than one that apply. I can be only one answer. I always choose the actual option when I'm creating the form of required question. That way if I miss something, it didn't count against them. They would have to go and um, <clears throat> fill it out before submitting. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this form. I have over 130 responses and is accepting responses. So I can view the responses. As soon as you submit it, I don't know if it's it or not, don't worry about reading through it. Just put in something random. It will automatically email you your results. Okay. So as far as getting kids, they just they just follow a link, they choose the option in the list, they don't have to sign into any app or program whatsoever. This one is great. <sighs> So that's Google Form. I use Google Form to set it up, and I use Fluguru, which is an add-on, to automatically create it. And the new option is enable, do you have you've done the auto grade yet? Uh, no, we, no. Okay, did you do the, the test yet? Yep. Okay, so before I had to grade it, and then it would send out the email results. Right now it's live. Yep, I just got the email. Though. Yeah. So it'll automatically email the kids their results. So what I've been doing in my classes, especially for anthropology, is I give a quick 20 minute lesson. They take a quick quiz, then that determines what they do next. For example, they might 
do something with reading help. They didn't quite get in there. We explained the concepts in a simple video. Or they do some kind of core lesson, the piano worksheet, the kind of roundabout way. Or they totally ace it or got an A on it. Then I give them some kind of bonus thing. Or these much, uh, whatever it is, they go to the website. Um, you be challenge them in some way. And that's sent out right as part of the email, right? Like yes. if, they get, if they get five out of seven, yes. then they get a certain link versus two out of seven, they get a different link. Um, what I do is I just put those parameters on the board. Okay. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, so I'll just go say, go ahead. We'll go links into it automatically. Uh, sure. You're pretty familiar, and I have it set up on here. But what you want to do is get add-ons and then just search for Hulu. I know I'm throwing a ton of stuff at you guys there right now. This is, I designed this session as all the things I've used this entire year. So the things I think that work the best. So I'm kind of getting everything for me. So I, and then just what's this one, this Hulu. So then you, you choose that, you go through the accept things like you're doing before. Um, and really, if you just follow the directions and you hit that add-on, it's on help right now. I'd have to disable it, which I can do. Um, but it basically asks you to you have to fill it out once as yourself. It's like you'd be creating an entropy. And then it'll have you choose which response of the entropy you just look for your email. And then it'll set that as the standard. And then in the future, you just choose to enable auto grade. And anytime anybody responds to it, it'll automatically generate an email to them. Same with like that right wall. Which allows kids to look at their own case because exactly. they can bring themselves on a lesson. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or before it wasn't auto graded, so I had to wait and like run the script and then it would send it, which is still pretty good, but now it just even tells how many times it's submitted. And you can change if you only want it to respond once, which is what I always do in the beginning. I have this checked. So they can only get one shot at it. And then after that one shot, that determines what they're going to do next, right? Then in the future, when I'm just talking about like the homework score or homework score, I uncheck this. That way they can do it a billion times if they want. Doesn't bother me at all. I want them to learn, right? And it's just a matter of mastering that test. That's fine. Um, did it give you the correct and incorrect email, or did it just give you the score? The score. Okay. So um, when I first set up on this one, if I showed you a different one, I'm not going to take the time to do that. But I have it set up where it includes the questions and if it was right or wrong. I don't include the answer key. So when you go through the Foo Guru, um, it gives you an option to include the answer key. And I don't do that because I want to at least kind of figure it out when they're getting it wrong. Okay. So you're creating the quiz in Google Forms. Forms. Yep. And then it interfaces with Foo Guru. Yeah, looks. Why don't I? I can do it really quickly. I'll make one. So new, right? More forms. I'll do it start to finish. It won't take me more than I don't know three minutes. Um, how old is Mr. Glendening? Okay. How old? is Mr. Clendenning. <clears throat> Option two, 33, 43, 63. All right. I, hit, I always hit required question. For this case, under advanced settings, it gives you the shuffle option order. For this case, I don't really care about the option order. But for you, typically, I do choose that. Since these are in numerical order, it doesn't matter to me. But so that kids aren't cheating and they, it'll be hard for them to see the answer on the screen. I usually do choose that. For this one, I'm not going to. And then, and then also, is the way on Socratic, which is nice because you right. can put a grid up and kids can see which one they missed and which one they didn't. And so if, they, if it says A, well, for them it was A, but for another one it might be B. Exactly. And then they'll have a green or a red show if it's right or not. So right. they can't just sit there and wait for their buddy to answer and then yeah. um, go, oh, it's B. We could use right. the Badger again. Like, look right next door and see if they're next door. Yeah, but if that was still random question order, even in the Badger, right? 
or was that? Uh, yeah, and that's I think that's stupid. I think you are right now. I think about it. Um, but now for this, first of all, I'll show you. I'm gonna set it up for its shuffle question order. I always choose that, unless it's something progressive. I mean, but I can't really think of. Maybe if it's a reading, you want to do it in a certain order. Well, but I. And then the other one you get in trouble with sometimes is like your question there. You do random questions or random response order, and then it says all of the above, and all of a sudden yeah. the vote is A. Oh, right. And it screws them up, so you just got to reword it. Or you could just put all are true. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's where I run into problems sometimes. But sure. Um, so I do shuffle question order. I almost always do this, at least in the beginning. So one response per person. And I also do automatically collect WASA school as a community. That way, they don't have to sign in. Nothing. All they have to do is get to the link and automatically senses the tag key Galga <laughs> and their you know T turtle out and it gets to why the email. Okay. So I always choose those. I usually don't do the progress bar, though you certainly can. Okay. So I hit done. <clears throat> then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit live form. I'm going to respond once. I am 33. Submit. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is go to this form. I don't need this one anymore. And I'm going to go to um, tools, excuse me, to add-ons. Actually, I, I'm sorry. Yeah. Go to view responses. That will take me to the sheet where all the responses are. So this just shows all the responses so far. So it says the question, says what answer it was, the timestamp, and who did it. And that's me. All right. Now what I do is I do an add-on. And since you already, if you added FluBlue already, that's good. But you have to do this with every single quiz, which is a little bit cumbersome, but it's really not a big deal to me. Enable FluBlue on this sheet. It is now been, uh, enabled for the sheet. You may now access it from the menu. Okay. Now I go to form. Excuse me, add-ons. Now I'm going to go to Fluberu. Now I'd like to do advanced. Enable auto grade. <clears throat> now take me through some steps. Before enable audio, you must first set up your grading and email settings. Click OK to proceed. Fluberu grading step one. So hold Mr. Clendenning, that's worth one point. You don't want to make this worth points. I just always for the username, identify student. So that's right. You can make some questions worth more points, which is a really nice option. And then it's going to ask you to choose an answer key. That was my submission, so that should be right. Yeah. Yeah. And you can redo it and make one call the answer key so it's easy to find. So yeah, it's not it's never too late to redo the responses. You can rerun the Fluber too. Okay, so I checked that because that was the right one. Okay, what I do is, this one's a really important one to check, email address questions. If you put in like period number, if that's one of the questions, which I always put on there, um, you want to make sure the email address question is not period number. Include li quest list of questions and scores, the ones that you got, I did not do that. In other ones, it will say the questions and if they got it right or wrong, but they won't give them the answer. It'd be all in green or all in red if they got it right or wrong. So that's really nice. I usually don't give them the answer key for cheating purposes, but you could, okay? Especially like maybe later on, whatever you want to do, but I usually don't, and I don't usually put a message in there. So that's good, that's how I like it. Um, if I really wanted to try, like I did with you guys, I don't want to give them any clues, I just want them to have a score, I unclick that, it doesn't even tell them which ones they get right or wrong, they have to kind of figure it out. I decided to not do that anymore. And that so. message part, that's where I was saying oh, earlier, yeah. where you type in a link or something, Oh, sure. Yeah, no, we were saying. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, zero to two would be the help. 
video, you know, and watch. Yeah, that's a really good idea, Patrick. And then we give them a message, well, right? Well, it's my idea. It's that other people have seen them do it. Oh, okay. That's, that's, but that way, you don't have to worry about them typing stuff in or anything like that. You just bam, link it right there. If you got this, go do this or something. Yeah, that's good. I mean, for me, I just have it on the smart board, but that's another good way to reinforce it. So I just hit continue. Now I'll just send you, I'll, I'll throw this on classroom again, and then again, it's going to do that same idea. Oops. I started closing some of this. Here we go. So share. You just need to get the shareable link. That's all you need. Copy link. Done. Just going to create another assignment. This guys are already there. Page. Link. Add. Sign. Okay. So if you go to Google Classroom again, you could do that and then go to answer that question. It'd be exactly that start finish. And you get it set up. <clears throat> Does that make sense, Terry? Mm -hmm. I apologize if I went too fast. Um, I can always, anytime you want to work after school to get that to work. Um, I use Google Forms the most with Fluvaru, I would say, of all of these, just because it's going to always be there for me. Versus if I make it in Socrative, I use that usually for the exit tickets or some of the games, but then I have to be in Socrative to use it. Okay. Um, okay. You know this one is. Uh, you guys have a great audience. Thank you. Um, this one is rather. It costs money. You do get five imports for free, but my kids have been begging me to do this over and over. And I wish I'm, for next year I'm going to ask for the eight dollars a month from the school <laughs> to do it, but. Um, Kind of like what I was getting to with Google Slides, they all see the presentation at the same time, and they can now with this interact with it. And I tried to email the creators and say, hey, can you give me a few months since I'm going to go over with the teachers on this? But basically, you have your presentation in Google Slides. You can import that presentation, and then you can do quick formatives throughout. So I figured I would just show it to you quick. Um, it saves their sessions. Um, and again, the students have really wanted to do this. So it's just call Pear Deck like the fruit. Teacher login. And this really is one of my favorite, but again I need to get some funding before I can start using it. Okay, so if you have premium, you can see individual results, but I'll show you this. So you have your kids do, and you guys can do this now, or please do it, and go to paradeck.com slash join. And then that's, uh, they also have some witty really sets. So multi staffs in the date for So M-S-I-H-N is the password. So you just go to paradeck.com slash join. <coughs> I'll say at the bottom how many have joined so I know exactly. Once I had that count for my class. Okay, good. What I usually do is, again, my, I had smartphone problems today, but I'll usually have remote desktop on my phone and I'll use it as a remote in the back of the room. That way I can see that everybody is on the same slide as I am. Okay. Uh, now, when this does, <clears throat> you have your typical presentation and imports it as a, an image. So, I might put a quick question. How many amendments are there to the Constitution? Or, I blah, 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 Constitution, blah, 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 right? And then what I do is I just start a quick question. I'm going to oops, um, do a question about this slide. And then it can be, I'm going to choose a number one, right? So a numeric answer. That should prompt you to put a number in. Yes? 
Oh, uh, I'm sorry. That's my bad. Here you go. Well, it's okay if you're right wrong, you can just put in a random thing if you want to. But again, the question was how many amendments are there? I do a lesson about the Constitution. Okay, and I have two responses. So then it gives me a number graph. And as kids have, they like, wow, we didn't get it. So we totally got it, right? And then I'll reteach that material for them to how well you did. There's a bunch of other options in here. In fact, the the creators of Pear Deck say, don't, you don't need to have any presentation at all. Just do you get your, your presentation, like maybe on here, and then you can always go back and forth. But the best thing about doing this is you have all that information on the slides, and then you can put in a question whenever you want, but just a matter of clicking. So let me do another question uh, about anything. How many of you learned a lot in class? Right? That's just a yes or no. Yeah, so, you know, I'm going to see everybody who maybe gets it or whoever, and it's live. It's also anonymous, so kids aren't seeing who put down who got the amendments question at all. Right? Only you see that. However, you can, if you pay for it, it will give you both. So it's anonymous on the screen, but also gives you the student data for later if you want to revisit who did what. Okay. Uh, so again, you can just keep putting in questions, any kind of thing. You can have them do uh, true false. They can actually draw maybe yes or no, agree, disagree. They can write stuff in there. So um, what is your favorite subject in school? Or what was your favorite subject in school? You, know, you ask any kind of question. And it's not going to show those responses until you want it to. So again, I have down here, I can either lock it. So once I'm done with kids like messing around, they might lock the responses. Or here, there's hide it or show it, right? So history, and that is what I teach now, in the reading or language arts class, of course, right? Uh, or I can hide those. And again, let's say kids are being a little goofy, and they just hit this lock button, and all of a sudden they can't do any more responses. Otherwise, if this is unlocked, they can just keep putting stuff in, right? So that's pretty nice. So um, I kind of think about that, because I, like I said, I want to use this more. And again, there's also things like drawing, on draggable, on there tons of ways of making you know, the slides interact. And when I go to the next slide, so do the students' computers go to the next slide. So you said, uh, how much does it cost? Eight bucks. Eight bucks. A month. Eight bucks. A month or two? Oh, a month. Three. To me, for me, yes. Okay. For each of the kids. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, that's acceptable, that gives you but that's that still a lot of money. What's that? With the eight dollars a month, you guys have two more kids who have time. Yeah. You can do the free one right now, right. Um, and you can import five times. You can also, if you don't want to pay, um, I'm going to end this session. Oh, let's just end. You, if you create it in here, you can get unlimited amount of those. So if I want to create a new deck, and imagine you're creating a PowerPoint from scratch, but limited to this program. That's what you're going to do now. Okay, personally, that sounds awful to me, right? For me, I want to have something Google Slides, and then I can go anywhere with it, okay? So that's kind of how they're getting you, is if you want to import stuff, you got to pay for it. But it seems like a really good company, if you even talk to the, whole, the, the CEO and that, that kind of stuff, I said, does it really have to be that expensive? Because like $2 a month sounds much more reasonable. $8? <laughs> and, and I'm assuming that, let's say you import a bunch of stuff, and all of a sudden you stop paying, you can't go back and use it. No, and that's actually the really good thing about it. You could. You can. So once you load everything in, let's say you, you pay for a year, yes. then after that. And so you got all your stuff, and that's what I was thinking to myself. You know what, if I just get it for one year, I'm teaching the same classes year to year, right. it would be worth it that first shot of rounds. 
and you can always modify them later. So yeah, no, you have in fact, and that's why I said you know I had. Um, let's, go, let's go back. I had those ones I've used before, right? That bill of rights one, sessions, and these are some of the sessions I actually made. Or um, so that's just a Google Slides presentation. I imported it, right. and then any point you can throw in the questions in there. You don't have to make a question slide. Okay. You know, it does a really good job of making it kind of generic. They can ask. It really does keep them in line. Um, whether it's a number or they ask a question, and, like I said, kind of almost does everything you want. It really does. Right. <clears throat> so I really suggest using Pear Deck. Um, Okay, I'm gonna kind of get into the end here. Just as some suggestions, because I started with that thing of what the students interested in. So my logic was try to recreate those things in the classroom. So these are just some ideas. So listening to music, let them listen to music. Find a playlist on YouTube that might pertain to what you are studying. So have them listen to Civil War music in the background, right? As they're working. Or have them listen to, I don't know, Shakespearean type music, whether it's most, whatever it is, okay? Um, try to find something that maybe is applicable for those kids that want to listen to music. Um, rather than just saying, hey, here's a problem with listening to music in class, they'll spend half the time figuring out which song they want to listen to, right? But if you say you can listen to this playlist, playlist and you made it for them, all of a sudden they're like, okay, you know? If they don't like the music, well, then too bad to say it. That's all I see. <laughs> Um, so let them see on their own during certain settings of work time, evaluate productivity and use that as an incentive. Uh, reading. So I'm just going to go over some real quick things and if you guys want to add anything in here, that's why I have this giving you editing right. So provide choices, student autonomy, that's going to keep them engaged. If they get to choose what they get to read and you give them choices, that's going to keep them in the mix. Um, one big thing I was thinking about, and I've done a lot of research is on the uh, provide mini videos to make it come alive. So whether it's a worksheet or maybe create a Google Doc with questions, and then um, as you're going through the questions or whatever it is, you make a video explaining what happened in that chapter. Or what did you think about when this happens, right? And you have little links to the, the YouTube videos to help make that reading more interactive, okay? Again, um, Erasma, I thought would be really good. So if they had a cover of the book and just for a quick book review, that's a way of making it more interesting. And then uh, videofy it with your commentary. So you can uh, make videos about making commentary on the book. Maybe either reading it for them, which I've done with units, and then explaining the key vocab, or you just kind of commenting on whatever it is, okay? Um, hunting or fishing, and this was a little bit of a stretch for me, but I was trying to get everybody, and so maybe identify the plant and animal life for science as they're hunting, right? So looking at ecosystems, and rather than being a typical ecosystem where they look at this chart, they're actually identifying the real world as they go out. Related information to hunting, stats, debates, math problems. You guys aren't science teachers. Um, but I was thinking about give them assignments and problems for them to think about while they hunt. So survival, social issues, how can I relate that information to what we're studying in class? Um, for sports, I don't have this, but another teacher does. They have a basketball hoop in their classroom. They get to shoot if they get something right. Um, sports games in the classroom. So what I do is I do smart board baseball, and they get to choose single, double, triple, or home run, and if they get Single is an easy question like Jeopardy, and if they get it, they get to progress to that based on the smart board. Um, and it's kind of like your typical, but you have kids that are at bat and they choose how difficult it is. So I try to in uh, integrate sports themes into various activities we do. Um, it's important to talk about sports, I think, to relate to those kids, even though I'm really not much of a sports fan myself. Okay, so um, I don't have much on those two slides because I was trying to fill in some of those things there, and I thought maybe you guys would want to contribute some ideas. But that was really all I was going to cover, and I didn't think it would take that long or I would talk that much. But um, 
if you just copy and paste this, I suppose I should just hop in with that. That would be better than how I did it. I hope it looks like somebody else starting to. Um, yeah, just copy and paste that. Uh, or did you do that already, Pat? Is that you did that? Okay, you beat me to it. No, I didn't do anything. I just uh, I, I did. Did you highlight it? No. Oh. oh. I, I just did it. Oh, okay. All right. Um, that's just for the attendance and feedback. So, like for our school, they're allowed to wear casual for a day, and or they can leave early. Okay. So, since you say till five today, Terry, you can leave early three days. So I have it. Yeah, I me mean, at three o'clock. That's all Julie's explained it to me. Because I'm like, how can I motivate teachers to come to the training? <laughs> Uh, actually, yes. They need to be typically paid for it. Stop the, stop the. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. 